Diego. San Diego. Is there any public comment on item 14085? Seeing none, item 14086. City Manager, be it ordered that the City Manager is authorized to accept grant funding in the amount of $22,703 from the U.S. Department of Justice, Office of Justice Programs, Bureau of Justice Assistance, Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Assistance Grant Program, FY 2014 local solicitation. The grant of $42,902 is distributed between three agencies. In accordance with grant specifications, grant funding will be allocated as such. $22,703 awarded to Augusta Police Department, $12,750 awarded to the Waterville Police Department, $7,449 awarded to the Kennebec County Sheriff's Office. The Waterville Police Department will be the administrative agency for the grant. Grant funding to the Augusta Police Department will be used to train Augusta police officers and dispatches in the CIT or the Crisis Intervention, intervention Training. The purpose of this training is to improve the way law enforcement respond to people experiencing mental health crises. Funding will also be used for the purchase of evidence, property lockers, and interview room recording equipment. Is there any public comment on 14086? Is this the block? Gina, come forward. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Gina Turcott, and uh, I'm a resident of Augusta and also the founder and president of the Maine Tennis Justice League. I do have a question about the expenditures that are earmarked uh, that these these monies are earmarked for, will they be um, spent on any crisis actors? Crisis what? Actors. Well, I'd have to refer to the chief. Chief, can you? Uh, this is. I assume this is the block grant funding under the burn. Yes. Burn yes. grant. This this training is sponsored by NAMI. That's all on volunteers. The the money is used. A portion of this money is used to pay overtime for the officer to attend. It's a 40 hours. Okay. With the training. So they won't, be, and, they won't be engaging the you public. Have to speak into, uh, Gina, sorry, you have to speak into the microphone. So. so they won't be engaging the public to, um, to uh, represent those um, people that they're going to be intervening for? We will not. This is sponsored by NAMI, National Alliance of the Mentally Ill. Okay. They provide the training to the guys. Please come. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Gina. Any further public comment on 14086? Seeing none, item 14087. City Manager ordered that the City Council authorize a beer and wine tent. to be held Friday, June 13th during the Kennebec Valley YMCA's 100th birthday celebration or alternative rain date at the city's Capitol Park adjacent to the KB YMCA. Be it further ordered that the beer and wine tent be managed and operated by a duly licensed vendor with all applicable licenses, permits, and insurance in place prior to the event and all, that all servers will be properly TIPS trained and certified. Is there any public comment on 14087? Leaf? Good evening, Mayor, City Council, Leaf Don, Director of Community Services. We have a new guy on the block, so first I'd like to introduce him. Because I said, Tom, if you've only been here four years, should you really be looking four, at your Four tent? months, you mean? Four months. I mean, excuse me, four months. Sorry, boss. Probably four seems months. Like four years. Yeah. <laughs> so I would like to introduce Tom Warren, the new executive director of the Kennebec Valley YMCA. Tom and I have had a couple of lunches together and fellowship at a banquet here a few weeks ago. And, and he's doing a terrific job. And, and so I wanted to first introduce Tom right. and then he'll field the questions regarding the, the great celebration that's coming up. Tom Warren. Tom, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Lee, for your support. And Mayor Stokes and the Honorable City Council, thank you for this opportunity to come before you. And uh, on behalf of Harry Lanfear, who is the chair of our uh, Y100 Year Special Event Committee, uh, I'm before you to answer any questions uh, for this request. Any questions, Mr. Warren? 
No, we, we, have, we have a fair amount of experience uh, in authorizing the uh, beer and wine tents. We've developed some experience over the years, I think. The city manager? A uh, couple of points, Your Honor. One, uh, um, Tom, uh, I assume, if asked, would point out that uh, uh, he only intends to come before you once every hundred years uh, with this request. Uh, really? The other thing that I would point out is that uh, Tom and his wife, Jane, uh, uh, are in the process of becoming Augusta homeowners uh, and neighbors of Councilor Rollins, I believe. Uh, well, my sympathies. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Augusta anyways. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Nice to meet you. Thank you Welcome for the opportunity you. and uh, hope to see you all there on uh, Friday night, Great. June 13th, it, and to celebrate 100 years of service to uh, the Augusta community. Friday the 13th? Yes. We hope that that will generate a little bit more attention to our event. But that is the actual 100th birthday, so we right? thought it was significant to have it and celebrate it on that day. I'll keep my black cat at home. <laughs> Thank you. Mm. Is there any further public comment on 14087? Yes, Gina. <clears throat> not to um, not to rain on the parade of YMCA's 100th birthday, but um, on the heels of of the previous um, comment I made about um, crisis training for mental health crises. Now we are talking about endorsing an alcohol event, which we know is going to require heightened police attention because heightened alcohol usage requires heightened diligence for bad behaviors, and it also exacerbates mental health issues. So <clears throat> I, I frown on the city endorsing any kind of event yep. that supports the use of alcohol and that um, solicits the public to use alcohol, which this event is doing, for whatever yep. my comments are worth. Thank you. Any further public comments on item 14087? Seeing none, item 14088. City Manager, ordered that the City Council authorize a beer garden to be held on Saturday, August 2nd during the Augusta Fest or alternative rain date at the City's waterfront park and adjacent parking lot. Be it further ordered that the beer garden be managed and operated by a duly licensed vendor with all applicable licenses, permits, and insurance in place prior to the event, and that all service will be properly TIPS trained and certified. Is there any public comment on item 14088? Yes, forward. Good evening, Mr. Good evening. Stokes. Members of the City Council, my name is Tyler Brown. I am the chair of the Promotions Committee for the Augusta Downtown Alliance. <clears throat> Excuse me. We are currently in the planning stages right now for the Augusta Fest celebration. It will be our third annual one. Uh, we have all of the vendors and with any applicable licenses and permits already set up for the event. Uh, pretty much it's going to be a downtown event down on Front Street. We'll be closing the street, inviting the public to come down and enjoy us a event from 2 to 9 o'clock and with four with music acts, events for the kids during the day with the beer tent starting at four o'clock until nine o'clock, <coughs> ending hopefully with fireworks. Um, any other further questions, feel free to give me a contact. Councilor Byron. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this is the third annual event. Correct, sir. What does it mean when it says all servers will be properly tips trained and certified? It means they will meet, I've actually spoken, our vendor is going to be Lisa's of Lisa's Restaurant down here in the, guess, uh, on Bangor Street. Tips trained from my layman's experience so far means that they have proper knowledge of food safety regulations along with the ability, I'm not exactly sure of course, but there's something I can find out for you. I'm not exactly sure what tips trained does mean as far as what the acronym is, sir. But. And a follow up if I might. Uh, how involved is our APD on these kinds of events? I've already spoken with Chief Gregoire. We are going to have two licensed police officers from the Augusta City, Augusta. That is, uh, we will be paying them for the time, obviously, but yes, we have already uh, arranged for them to be arranged down there during that time. And finally, maybe a follow-up with uh, Chief Gregoire as to what our experience has been over the last couple of years on this event, please. Good evening. We've had a very good experience, no problems with the beer tent. 
Okay. Thank you. And the, and the TIPS training, I used to represent an agency that did the, that certified the TIPS uh, uh, training course, and I believe it's designed to uh, train uh, servers in identifying when a person uh, is visibly, in, is, talk, is intoxicated, has had too much. When a, when a client is tipsy? Well, essentially, yeah, uh, but it's to identify those, uh, train the server in, in recognizing when it's time to um, uh, stop serving alcohol to a particular patron. Am I correct in that, Chief? I would, that was my understanding of the same thing. Thank you. Uh, any f questions of uh, Steve? Um, Steve Pecciconis, you're there too? No, I'm, I'm, I'm here in support of Tyler. He is our, uh, our chair for the event, and uh, he's the one putting all the arrangements together. Okay, great. Tyler and uh, Steve, thank you for being here. Any questions? Seeing none, any further public comment on 14088? Gina? Expanding on my previous comment, um, since the City Council is supposed to be representative, representative of the people and our voices, um, and since we know that increased alcohol usage leads to increased police necessity, um, I think it would be in the public's best interest if we looked at promoting health items rather than alcoholic items that increase the need for us to be responsible for them, indicated by our need to recognize when they've had too much. Well, why is it our responsibility to recognize when they've had too much to drink? Because we endorse an alcoholic event. The YMCA is a health center which promotes healthy events. It would be it would be a really great idea if they had a health food tent and, or, and raw juices and raw organic local produce and created on the spot raw juices on demand. It's easy. You just need the vegetables. You've got a rooster and you've got it done. And it's a lot healthier and, it's, and it reduces the cost for public officials. It reduces our concern for the public's behavior and it benefits the public overall and it also fits in with the YMCA's overall mission. So again, take that for whatever it's worth. Thank you, Tina. Thank Tina. You. Any further public comment on 14088? Leaf? Good evening, Leaf Dolan again, Community Services. TIPS, the acronym is Training for Intervention Procedures. So it's Thank you. Any further public comment on 14088? Seeing none, item 14091. Mayor and Council, order that the city manager is authorized to execute a 90-year lease of the Hodg Hodgkins School property to Augusta Housing Authority, subject to review and approval by Corporation Council. Is there any public comment on 14091? I have a question. Gina? Before I start, I want to inquire if there's anybody else who wants to make a comment because I'm going to be here a while. How long are you going to be here? We um, have, we have uh, you know, not just this, but we have a workshop that we have to prepare. So I would ask I, that you keep your remarks concise. I appreciate that you have a workshop, but um, <clears throat> I have some serious concerns that the public needs to be aware of, and I need to take my time to go through them. Well, Gina, I'll tell you what and we're going to do. And that's exactly about this. And Mayor. Uh, Gina. Mayor. Excuse me, ma'am. I have the authority to put time limitations on your remarks. I am asking you to be to the point and to be concise. And with that, please proceed. In response, I'm going to remind the City Council that they are a government, which is an organization through which a body of people exercises political authority on behalf of the people in that locality, which includes myself and everybody in the, in the room, and um, I read the newspaper article about the Hutchkins School Project, and I'm really disturbed by the fact that it's reported here that the Housing Authority, which is a quasi-municipal nonprofit organization, might form a for-profit company 
in order to be able to take advantage <clears throat> of financing options which are not available to nonprofits. Now, there's a few things we need to remember. The Augusta Housing Authority <clears throat> is simply a board of people appointed by the City Council. That board answers directly to the City Council, the City Council answers directly to the people, and if the Council does not uphold the people's best interest, the City Council will be replaced. The Augusta Housing Authority has two sister nonprofit corporations, one called the Augusta Housing Service Corporation, which was incorporated in 1979. It has, according to Amanda Bartlett, $300,000 in cash liquid assets that are earmarked for low-income housing, which has been sitting in their account for a very, very long time. I'm sure Amanda can tell us exactly when it was deposited, but I have information that says it was about 10 years ago that $200,000 was made as a private donation. <clears throat> My concern is, number one, why is this money still sitting there? With the epidemic of homelessness and, and, and housing problems we have in the city of Augusta, why is that money still sitting there? Number one. Number two, a city municipality has no business creating a for-profit company because none of you have any right to reap any benefit from those profits and the city has no right to reap benefits from a for-profit company because the government is a collection of people. It's a collection of principles. As the Black's Law Dictionary defines it, a government is a group of officers or persons having ultimate control and a structure of principles and rules determining how a state or organization is regulated. Now, the housing project at the Hodgkin School also raises other concerns, the fact that it's already been discovered that it has asbestos in the flooring, mold is present in, in the building, and other damage may have occurred. And this building is being earmarked for elderly residents who are already subject to <clears throat> increased health concerns in just normal healthy circumstances, notwithstanding the residue from um, any leftover asbestos, any leftover mold, any other damage that may have not been discovered, anything that may have happened. Now, I, I, I absolutely support the need for low-income housing, and I absolutely support the need for elderly housing. I believe, like we said the last time I was here, we have an increased need for not only elderly housing, but we have increased need for special accommodations for elderly because of their special needs. But we have to take into consideration their special health needs, too, and how previous asbestos, previous mold, and other kinds of damage <clears throat> that's caused by a vacant building is going to have on their health. So that's one issue. The other issue is why is the city looking at engaging in such a project when they're now looking at um, demolishing homes on Court Street? And I am really concerned about the agenda of this municipality and the agenda of the city council and the fact that Mayor Stokes himself was just nominated as a Superior Court judge to the very courthouse building that he just sold four houses on a residence to make a parking lot for. And that's another issue that I will be raising in a public hearing that I'm going to move that we, that we make right now because the property owner at 32 Court Street is here with me right now. I'm a tenant at 32 Court Street. It can house six tenants. Which Could you get back on the subject of the Hodgson School, I am please? on the subject of low-income elderly housing. That's not, we're here for the item number 14091. The Hodgson School is earmarked for low-income elderly right. housing. So I'm still talking about low-income elderly housing. Could you be precise housing. about your objections and your comments, please? Okay. Then I object to the city municipality using my money to create a for-profit corporation. I object to you using my money to do anything that is going to put our elderly people in more serious risk of harm. This building has been vacant for too long. It needs too much work, and we should not put elderly, housing, elderly people in that building. Um, before I step away, I am going to require that we talk about the courthouse project in a future meeting. 
we do need to schedule it. You are, you are talking about displacing four residences for a parking lot, and you have no backup plan to put us anywhere, and I will leave that for right now, but that's something that the public needs to be aware of, that you have a YMCA parking lot that's double the size of the housing lot that you guys want to take, and you're not even considering the YMCA parking lot as a, as a parking lot for the courthouse. That's offensive, and that's in violation of your fiduciary duty. you get back on the to topic, ma'am? I am on point. I am on point. You are here to serve my interests. You are taking away uh, my building. You are I, not are going to do it. talking about the Hodgson School. I am school. done in public. You will hear from me in private, as you already have. Thank you. Any further public comment on 14091? This is a letter written by Gregory Roy, owner of 32 Court Street, Augusta, Maine, dated May 3, 2014, addressed to Keith P. Luke, Deputy Director of Development Services, 16 Coney Street, Augusta, Maine, 04330, regarding 32 Court Street, Augusta, Maine. Dear Mr. Luke, I received your letter dated April 17, 2014, on behalf of the City of Augusta and the State of Maine, suggesting a fair market value purchase price of $85,000 for the acquisition of my revenue-generating property at 32 Court Street with the sole intention of raising my property to build a parking lot for a new court facility, even though the former YMCA lot on the corner of Winter and State Streets is already cleared and ready for purchase and development. Your letter stipulates the state of Maine will own the new court facility and the city of Augusta, quote, has taken the lead role in negotiating the sale of private property, close quote, on the state's behalf. Your letter also states our goal is to negotiate the sale of your property both fairly and equitably. I have owned 32 Court Street for more than 16 years and have always utilized my private property as a revenue generating business and I intend to continue using my rental property as a for-profit business. 32 Court Street is an irreplaceable property due to its unique location, its solid structure, compliance with 2014 codes, quality of care and workmanship, and specialized and rare licensure in that it provides the potential for other uses for the residents of Augusta and surrounding communities. Giving serious consideration for the epidemic of homelessness, it is wholly illogical, irresponsible, and not for the public's benefit to destroy 32 Court Street when it would cause a serious injury to every member of the low-income community, notwithstanding the permanent economic injury caused to me and my current and future tenants. Simply put, $85,000 does not compensate me for any of the recent building improvements which are compliant with 2014 codes. 15 years of sweat equity, I have supplied this property as a professional contractor for which I have not received just compensation, nor does your offer address any lost future business revenue. The limited restricted use appraisal report specifies an inaccurate total square footage which must be corrected before any further action can be taken. The limited restricted use appraisal report was presented to me with information that was now obsolete, specifically on the date of evaluation, October 24, 2013. The building was vacant. The building was being prepared for improvements. The appraisal indicates exterior only inspection. The appraisal indicates the final value estimate is considered to reflect the subject's current as-is condition. The appraisal indicates no consideration was given to any personal property or business equipment and fixtures currently associated with the business enterprise occupying the premises. Many changes have occurred at the property since October 24, 2013, which make your offer of $85,000 grossly inadequate and totally insufficient. Some of those changes are 2014 code compliant improvements continue to be made. Units 1 and 2 received certificates of occupancy in February 2014. Units 1 and 2 are now occupied with good tenants. 
the property is generating consistent long-term business revenue. The property is headquarters for a new nonprofit neighborhood association. Units 3 and 4 will be opening in the immediate future. Units 5 and 6 will be open upon completion of all improvements. The factual elements listed above are not all inclusive and are subject to modification. As you can clearly see, an offer of $85,000 does not represent fair market value for this property and will not be given any consideration by me. Since I will not be considering or accepting your offer as it is presented, there is no reason for me to attend the scheduled meeting for May 5th at 1 p.m. Since my right to constitutional due process has now been invoked by your plan to acquire my private property, I am requiring the City of Augusta, the State of Maine, and all contractual agents to give me adequate advanced written notice of all meetings, hearings, conferences, work sessions, and any type of negotiations regarding the new court facility and the fate of 32 Court Street. My final suggestion to the City of Augusta and the State of Maine would be to shift your focus away from my property at 32 Court Street and realign that focus on the old YMCA lot since taking that vacant and cleared parcel would require negotiations with only one individual who cannot claim special circumstances, building losses, nor any lost revenue. Please share my response with all those individuals who need to know and advise me of all future meetings and conversations regarding my property. Thank you. Regards, Gregory Roy, Realtor, 207-215-8548. Reprinted with permission by Mr. Gregory Roy. This is a letter from Gina Turcott, tenant at 32 Court Street, Augusta, Maine, dated May 5th, 2014, addressed to Keith P. Luke, Deputy Director of Development Services, Municipality of Augusta, Maine, 16 Coney Street, Augusta, Maine, 04330. Regarding 32 Court Street, Augusta, Maine. Dear Mr. Luke, this letter shall be considered my legal objection to all negotiations between all elected officers of the City of Augusta and the State of Maine to acquire 32 Court Street, Augusta for the purpose of building a parking lot for increased court business and enhancement of tax revenue at the people's expense, causing severe injury to the public. I am a legal tenant of 32 Court Street, having excitedly moved into this building in February 2014 after being homeless for many years. I did not impetuously choose this building without thorough economic discernment. I chose this building for many critical reasons, some of which are listed below. One, location next to the Superior Courthouse for ongoing personal court business. Two, location, near District Court for ongoing personal court business. Three, location, walking distance to my daughter and granddaughter's home. Four, location, walking distance to libraries, businesses, and social services. Five, location, few residents, peaceful nights, weekends, and holidays. Six, location, very high safety area, no crime or public disturbances. 7. Location. Unique view of historical buildings, river, and sunset and sunrise. And 8. Owner. Greg Roy is honorable, respectful, and always acts legally. 32 Court Street is a safe, decent, and sanitary building capable of housing seven low-income tenants at very reasonable rates with many amenities included. Additionally, the owner, Greg Roy, is one of the best landlords in the state. Taking this dwelling away from the community you are sworn to represent, protect, and serve would perpetuate a homelessness crisis which all officers of the City of Augusta and the State of Maine are duty-bound to prevent or remediate, not proliferate with illogical, tax-enhancing, liberty-endangering commercial projects. Increasing court business does not benefit the public nor is it for the greater public good, since most court business imposes sizable taxes, individual duties, and liberty injuries. 
tax is defined by Black's Law 9th as a charge, usually monetary, imposed by the government on persons, entities, transactions, or property to yield public revenue. As you can see, the definition of tax is not restrained to a particular type of tax. If any municipality or body politic assesses a fee for the public, it is a tax by definition. Therefore, all court revenue, fines, fees, penalties, and charges are taxes. 1 MRSA subsection 8161B prohibits exercising eminent domain power when taking a private property primarily for the enhancement of tax revenue, such as for a new courthouse. Arbitrary destruction of a rare licensed rooming house to build a parking lot is utterly abusive, discriminatory, and repugnant to many constitutional and human rights protections afforded to every low-income and homeless tenant in the state. 32 Court Street is an exceptional property with its rooming house licensure, its unique and peaceful view of the horizon and historic buildings, and a secluded location near many businesses and city services. The people of the state of Maine will be doubly taxed by this project by the fact that public bonds were issued to finance this project, which need to be paid by the very same people who will be taxed, sanctioned, and their liberties hijacked within the court facility they paid to build. Additionally, since the new court facility will accommodate more people, attract new business, and will have certain financial expenses paid for by those very people, Naturally, the state and city will be increasing their budget appropriations to meet those tax burdens, which naturally will increase the need for increased court tax revenue, which will come directly from the public. Evidently, the public does not benefit from more court fees, fines, duties, and taxes. Amanda Bartlett is the new executive director for Augusta Housing Authority, who recently said, we're at a near crisis situation in this community right now and that she wants Augusta Housing Authority to expand its role by potentially getting into developing, rehabilitating, building, and owning housing units. A Kennebec Journal newspaper article dated February 16, 2014, indicates the new leader of the Augusta Housing Authority wants the organization to take a more aggressive role in addressing what she describes as the near crisis level lack of affordable safe housing in the city. The City of Augusta co-sponsored a community housing forum with Augusta Housing Authority on March 4, 2014 to discuss how to fix the homelessness crisis and rapidly decreasing number of safe, decent, and habitable apartment buildings in the city. Augusta Housing Authority is a municipal board created by elected officials of the City of Augusta. Therefore, Augusta Housing Authority is a municipal subdivision and a body politic having only as much authority as the people explicitly authorize it to have, and only for the public's collective safety, health, and welfare benefit. Amanda Bartlett indicated that their sister corporation, Augusta Housing Service Corporation, which is an IRS 170B1AVI organization, and which receives most of its support from a governmental unit or the general public, has liquid assets of $300,000, which is purportedly saved for acquisition, development, and maintenance of low-income properties, although none has been spent since the private corporation was formed in 1997. City of Augusta Office of Economic and Community Development has declared on their official government website, we're strengthening already established neighborhoods with programs designed to rehabilitate vacant or dilapidated homes. We're working with developers to bring contemporary loft-style apartments overlooking the scenic and recreational opportunities afforded by the majestic Kennebec River to our revitalized downtown district. City of Augusta, Office of Economic and Community Development, further states on their neighborhood revitalization page, city officials and the OECD staff value these neighborhoods and we're investing in them. We're striving to preserve the special qualities of our community and revitalize the areas that need our help, and we're encouraging and supporting the establishment of neighborhood associations so that we can all work together in planning for the future of our neighborhoods in our city. 
Offensively contradicting these pledges made by the OECD, the city has engaged in ongoing secret negotiations since 2009 without any consideration for the public you serve or your electors in this neighborhood about demolishing four residential buildings which are capable of housing at least 20 people which are all currently inhabited by peaceful law-abiding individuals many of whom have lived in this small neighborhood for decades as reported by the Kennebec Journal on March 19 2014 quote while the new building near the intersection of State and Winthrop streets isn't expected to generate new jobs it will consolidate about 100 employees under one roof hundreds more will come to conduct business close quote it is imperative to note that court business is not conducted for the public's benefit but instead imposes a serious fiscal injury on many citizens who are coerced and intimidated to use court services under duress imminent threat of arrest and loss of liberties as disclosed in the March 19th newspaper article, quote, the new building isn't expected to generate new jobs, close quote, illustrates its limited actual benefit to the public who are paying the bonds which are financing this $55 million project with no new jobs. It is imperative to note that the old YMCA law on the corner of Winthrop and State Streets is clear and ready for development and which will not eliminate any habitable dwellings or displace any tenants or businesses. It is also a more practical location for a parking lot since the patrons of the Lithgow Library and surrounding businesses will also be able to use the parking spaces. If the size of that lot is less than what is needed for a parking lot, another reasonable option would be to build another parking garage to supplement the parking garage at the bottom of Winthrop Street, which is not currently used to full capacity. If there are safety concerns when crossing Winthrop Street from the YMCA lot, the next reasonable option would be to build a suspended catwalk or underground tunnel from the old YMCA lot connecting to the old or new courthouse. Building a suspended catwalk or underground tunnel across Winthrop Street is viable because the street is not allowed to be used by oversized vehicles or heavy equipment and all traffic moves very slowly and cautiously due to pedestrians and regular traffic. The catwalk and tunnel will also guarantee pedestrian comfort and safety during the winter months. I rented this apartment at 32 Court Street with the intention of living here for many years in order to develop my professional business, which requires living within immediate proximity to the courthouses, as well as other critical reasons. If the elected officers for the City of Augusta and State of Maine truly want to preserve the special qualities of our community, they will abandon all ideas of destroying 32 Court Street and all Perm Street residences. If elected officers acting as the agents for the City of Augusta and the State of Maine decide to continue negotiations, they will be required to explain how taking four residential properties instead of utilizing a comparable vacant parking lot is for the greatest good of the public and with the least private injury to the tenants and businesses who will be displaced. I also reserve and will also exercise all my rights under the Maine Constitution and Maine Revised Statutes to receive just compensation for all losses, injuries, expenses, and other related costs required to pay for and relocate me to a comparable residence with identical financial and personal benefits. Since I will be directly impacted by all activities against 32 Court Street, I require to be notified with appropriate advanced written notice and be included in all subsequent hearings, conferences, meetings, and negotiations. Please send correspondence about all conferences, meetings, negotiations, and hearings to me at 32 Court Street, Apartment 1, Augusta, or you can telephone me at 207-333-0628. In peace, Gina Turcott, 32 Court Street, Apartment 1, Augusta, Maine. CC Greg Roy, Realtor, Landlord.